Welcome to art class. Today, we're going to be uh, painting the one and only Santa Claus. That's right, Saint Nicholas, Santa. This is actually the very first photo of Santa um, ever taken. No, uh, it's the very first photo if you Google Santa and um, on Google Images, there he is, this um, version of Santa. Um, I chose that one because not only is it a good picture, but um, it'll be easy for you to find if you want to pull up a big ver version of it. Um, you just go to Google and search Santa, here he is. Uh, so if you want to follow along with something a little bit bigger. Um, so. I wanna, uh, I'm gonna do three versions of Santa today because when I start a painting um, or a uh, bigger drawing or uh, anything with color, I have to think about how do I start this painting? You know, uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna paint Santa. Here's my canvas. Um, I wanna paint Santa, but um, I don't know where to start. Should I start with the red? Should I start with the green? Should I start with a pencil and sketch it out? Um, you know, should I do big things first and then go to the details, or should I just start on the little details? Um, you know, which brush to use? There's so many questions when you start a painting. But generally, when I start a painting, um, I got some of these methods just I figured out on my own, and I've uh, also um, been reading a book uh, called a la prima about oil painting and he talks about how to start a painting so um, that inspired me to record this um, but I've kind of adapted it here well the first one I call sketch and block in block in just means uh, put in general masses of color like not trying to get really realistic I'm just trying to put the big blocks of color onto my canvas. And then a sketch, that would be with something like a pencil or a stick of charcoal or, a, you know, a pastel or something like that, chalk. Um, could even be with thin paint. Um, that's where we basically are sketching what we're about to paint. Uh, and this is uh, just a rough sketch to get us um, an idea of where to go so we're not just winging it with paint. It's hard to correct mistakes. No, it's not hard, but it takes a little effort and time to correct some mistakes when you've painted something wrong and you want to fix it. Uh, but it's really easy to just erase pencil or uh, charcoal, those kind of things. So those are good tools to sketch with because you can kind of get get things sort of how you want them before you go in with the paint and spend all that time and um, you know effort on painting because painting is it does take some effort and it, uh, it you know mixing your colors getting everything out so it's nice to have some things in line before you get started just to help yourself out um, I'm not going for like a photo realistic version of this Santa right now. I'm just, I'm emphasizing some of the roundness and just making my own Santa off of this pose. Though, I, I mean, I'm going, I'm trying to get it as close to this as possible just to make it look real, but I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and adjust it until it's exactly like it because that's not as important to, to the end result. Alright, yeah, he's got kind of a round face. Alright, something like that. And yeah, again, the, I don't even really need to go into that much detail as I'm going into now. Um, but let me just finish up the sketch. Something like that. Here's, actually, I'm going to fix this uh, face facial uh, posture here. I think it's a little bit too up. 
Um, yeah, and again, we're I, I'm gonna I would eventually paint over uh, a lot of this, so it doesn't matter if it's messy. It's again, it's just to get your ideas on and your your placement of everything figured out before you go in. So you can see I was able to easily erase this because this is my uh, pretend pencil here and sort of change the line to something I liked a little bit more. Look at his glasses. All right, so then once I got like a, a general idea of where everything was, um, then I would do the block in stage, which is just choosing the mm, the color that there's the most of, which on this one is probably that red. Just choosing a red that's as close as I can get to like the middle of all that area. Maybe like this color red or something. And then I would just uh, fill in the areas that that exists. This, uh, and really, in this, and in this stage, the blocking in stage, I'm going over a lot of the lines I just made, even correcting some mistakes is as I look back and forth, I'm like, oh, that line, now that I see it, was a little bit um, off. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that um, accordingly. So I'm just quickly doing this now, and I would be fixing my mistakes a little bit more. I'm gonna maybe add a little bit on the face. Okay, what else do I see in there? Maybe that uh, the like a really dark color for that Christmas tree. I didn't even choose green, you see, because it I can always put the green on top. Right now I'm just blocking in. Oop. Getting the general idea of where the big colors are, the darks, the lights. I'm just looking, where do I see this, where do I see the darkest darks? Um, and in all those places, I'm putting this dark paint. Mm -hmm, just like that. A little bit under the collar. Cool. And then let's see, let's fix the white, uh, maybe even the whites, because to me they're like a little bit yellowed, um, especially his hair. Or, I mean, the fur and his hair on his chin. So I'm going to go ahead and white that, I mean, yellow that rather. Uh, maybe a little bit of grayed out white for the background. Uh, Always nice to drop most like drop the canvas white to a more tan or yellow or blue so that you can add white on top when you're painting. It's uh, in my experience just uh, a little bit nicer experience uh, painting white on top of something because painting white on a white canvas feels. Um, it's just weird because you don't see it. So if you have a middle gray to paint on, then the white you need, uh, the white you put on top, you can see exactly where you're putting it and you can be very um, sort of uh, careful with it. I'm just gonna put in a general skin tone. And I can go right over a lot of lines, maybe keeping anything that I absolutely need. But I'm trusting that if I drew it once, I could probably draw it decently fine again. Let's get that mustache in. It's a little bit. shine of his cheeks there. Yeah, I'm going a little bit past the block end stage almost, but um, you get the idea. I would just keep 
now at this point you can see I'm starting to naturally do it is I'm going I'm getting into the actual painting of the thing you know I would s uh, start to do the smaller and smaller shapes as I knock them out um, one by one but um, the important part for now is just how we started it uh, quick sketch and then blocking in with the big shapes and then here I go I'm off to the races painting this guy uh, very quickly here get a little bit more detail do, 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 do. Oh, I forgot the uh, <laughs> the red on the Christmas tree these little ornaments and some gold So watch this when I have white, pure white. Um, then I put that on top. I don't know if you can see this, but it it really brightens up the area that you put it on um, when it's used more sparing like that. Um, it's a powerful tool to have, anyways. If you if you didn't turn the white of your canvas to like gray or something, then it it won't look as the white won't look as bright and you'll struggle to get the brightest areas as bright as you want them. There we go. Alright, <laughs> I'm going to stop there uh, with Santa 1. Let's turn him off um, doop, and start. try the second method which is a full black and white uh, rendering of this. So this would be um, this would be if your subject's very complex and you really want to get it right. Um, if you're used to working in like pencil or something and the shading and everything, um, this would be a good method. So yeah, if, if I wanted to do something really complex, whereas the last method, um, I, uh, I just kind of roughly, you know, roughly put in all the areas of color after I sketched it quickly. Um, but if I really wanted some detail, um, this is the way I would do it. Because with this, I'm going to zoom in just to show you a little bit of what I mean. Um, now I'm going to use this charcoal, but you could use pencil or anything that you can shade uh, different shades of gray with. And um, just draw out this character here. Um, let's see. And I, again, I, I could be very careful with this, but that's not the point here. So I'm just going to quickly draw this guy in. Do, 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 do. Just to show you. So yeah, if you're somebody that likes to um, likes to draw very carefully and slowly, uh, maybe this would be the way for you to start a painting. Um, if you if you're really com comfortable with pencil drawing for or you know um, where you get all these little things in. I've done that a little bit, that type of pencil drawing, um, when I first was getting into drawing. That kind of, sort of intrigued me. Um, <laughs> this does not look sparkling at all. So I'm going to shade the areas that I want shaded. Um, you know, I would make this Christmas tree. Oh, I see what's going on. I've draw I drew a square, and then tried to uh, draw this rectangular image of Santa and squish him into a square. I was like, "Why is this?" So I'm doing a compressed version of him. If that makes more sense. Uh, this guy, I kind of mine looks kind of like a Russian Santa or something. So. Yeah, you can see I'm I'm fully 
um, shading this to a point where it's uh, where there's no questioning like where each part is um, you know how dark and light different areas of this face will be so I can use the darks here to push back almost like a sculptor this this way feels like feels like I'm sculpting something because um, if I slowly build up the color it slowly pushes areas back from you and you can even actually use um, you can use a eraser to sort of get that oops to bring back a little bit whatever you need maybe get some more beard yeah something like that um, of course I could definitely get like way more uh, detail in this um, I'm just gonna get the impl implication of it or something here There, okay. There's my uh, kind of creepy Santa. But anyways, once I had that, then I could go in with the colors that I want. And very specifically, okay, so say this area of gray right here. Why is it so? Oh, let me go to like a painting thing now. So I'd take my paint now. And uh, I would find like, see this area here? Okay, I need to make... You know, look at what color it needs to be. Okay, like a orangish. Um, and then how dark does it need to be? Just as dark as this. So it shouldn't look like it's getting brighter or darker. And I just fill in just where that dark area is, just of that that type of gray. Anything lighter, like this, this uh, surrounding, I would match that tone with my paintbrush. Just match everything. Don't go into any of the darker areas. Um, you know. uh, keep looking at the reference to just note any kind of shift in color. Um, there's like a really uh, dark place here. And yeah, you would just kind of build up this whole painting like this little by little. Um, little by little, you can completely match the underpainting or the drawing under. Um, let's see. Without much risk, because you're going, you, you're not, you just paint one color right up to the next one. Um, if I kept this going, it would be convincing. And what you end up with is a really nice um, realism sort of because all the colors and all the uh, shapes are, are laid out already you already know they're correct because you spent so much time and effort on the drawing part of it um, so you're almost like painting by numbers or something where everything's already been laid out for you then the, then your focus goes to what color is it that I'm seeing? How do I hit that color accurately? You know, I'm just gonna do a few more, move that away. Do a few more areas here. Get that red in. Uh, darker. Match where the red is here.
anyways yeah i would keep going keep refining these shapes um until they <laughs> looked somewhat convincing why is this what is going on oh i see oops um let's see i could like smudge these together Get the glasses off. <laughs> that looks uh, pretty funny. Anyways, <laughs> we'll go, go to uh, the next Santa. Um, all right, third method here is work outwards. This one is kind of fun, a fun technique. We're going to go even further zoomed in for this one. Um, well, let's see, how would I do that? I think I can actually turn them on here. Let's do this. Oops. Oops. Get rid of that guy. <laughs> hey, you win some, you lose some. It's the thought that really we're counting here. <laughs> it is a practice session anyways. Okay, so, okay, this one's an interesting one where we're just going to try to mix a color like, say, this area right here. Just We're just picking an arbitrary shape. So this really bright red, reddish, orangish that I see right there, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to take that and really try to replicate that exact shape of that color um, over on my canvas. Um, just right, you know, in an area of the canvas that I would want it to be. But right now I'm just going to start right here. Um, and just do that shape and make sure I get it right. Okay, that looks somewhat like that shape of that color. Maybe it goes under. Okay, then I would cut, pick the neighboring color. So What's like right there, a little bit paler, a little bit lighter. Um, and I would go in and do just where I see that color. Maybe it's on top of that. And I can start, I can group, you know, very similar colors together so that my shape's a little bigger. But I'm trying to match these as good as possible. Um, I'm going to choose this color, which is in the middle of the nose. It's a lot yellower. Something like that. Okay, and then, so that is uh, going to be So this um, this method is really interesting. It it's risky because there's no um, pre planning. You're just going in and really trusting that every brush stroke you make is correct. Um, but I think it 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 can create some really interesting um, effects. And, um, you know, because especially with things that, like faces, I think are risky to do this with. Um, so, you know, taking risks today. But things like flowers, landscapes, those kind of things, where the measurements don't really matter as much. Um, this method could really be something special. Because you're just putting really nice shapes of paint one after the other slowly building your painting but in a very careful way you know you're not rushing through this like I am if you're doing this method uh, how I suggest it um, in actuality I, I usually use a combination of this type of thing like uh, I will do some sections I'll just kind of 
one at a time. Uh, find the shape, or f choose a color, make whatever shape I see, um, and then choose the next color, so on and so forth. Um, I'll do that for certain areas, and then for other areas I'll do more of the rough blocking kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so hypothetically, if I was very careful and paying attention to where all these shapes were getting put down, I could make the entire uh, Santa like this, just build one thing next to each other. And the drawing would not end up as good as those other methods, but I might have like a really nice, fresh looking interesting all because every uh shape i'm painting on here is is intentional it's something i saw and i put down it doesn't really matter if it's right or wrong it's something like i saw one line here i saw one line here i see one here here and here um those are where i see the darkest brown and i'm just putting them in now um so this is i'm turning it more into a impressionist quick kind of thing um, let's see I'll go in with that bright red now just to finish this lesson up so this method it's almost like a no erase sort of thing I'm just gonna go in right where right where I see the brightest red areas and then I'm going to switch to a more muted red for the rest of it. See, the other two actually usually turn out better for me, um, just because this way is risky. But I actually, <laughs> maybe it's just because those other two turned out so poorly, but this, this way I actually really like how this little guy is turning out. It's a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, he's more expressive. Yeah, this one's actually I'm running out of room, so I'm going to draw on this other drawing here. Um, move Santa out of the way now. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a kind of an interesting version of Santa for you. <laughs> um, let's see if I. I don't really want to add anymore and and make him uh, mess up his charm. So I'll end there. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there's three ways to begin a painting. We have the, uh, let's see, let's get the other pictures out. We have this um, sketch and then block in method, which worked out pretty good for me. I think this is this would be on its way to a good painting. There was the sketch fully and then draw, paint it in. I sort of failed on that one, but um, it's a weird thing to do digitally too. Um, and then here's the pick a spot make the right shape and move to the next color and make that shape. Um, this one requires a really keen eye as to like where the very subtle sh colors and shape shifts are. But if you can do it, it's a, it's really fun. It's like really building. You see the painting um, sort of appear as you go and it's, it's always in a state of completion almost. Like each, this stage right here, I didn't even get to a lot of the subject um, yet it looks good already because all those shapes are interesting and correct in here 
Um, they don't need to be painted over. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. This is a, I've kind of um, kept going a little while here, but there's three ways to start your next painting. Um, so yeah, maybe try Santa. This w this turned out a little bit trickier than I thought. Um, but, you know, that's how drawing and painting is, too. Um, you could do a masterpiece one day, and then the next day uh, have trouble with the stick figure. So um, just uh, fight the good fight. Always seek to improve. And uh, have a great week.